How does facade ruin my relationship? <laughs> well, again, we have to look at what the purpose of facade in a relationship would be. And when you think about it, it's a pretty devious purpose, <laughs> it is. isn't it, to maintain a facade in a relationship? Because mm -hmm. we really want the other person to have concepts and ideas about ourselves that are not true at all and with that we know are not true in many cases. Mm -hmm. Or we want to maintain our own opinion of ourselves, th that things about us that we know are not true. So, whoa, this, uh, <laughs> again, if we look at this purpose of, of a facade in a relationship, we can see that it's quite evilly motivated. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and how can we then expect anybody who has a facade in a relationship to actually have a good relationship? Yeah. So let's have a look at some of the evil intents of the relationship, the, of the facade mm -hmm. first, and then we'll look at what it does. Okay, so my facade, me maintaining a facade, helps me believe things about myself that are not true. Mm. So either that's because I want to be in denial, isn't it? Correct. About what's the truth about myself, or I believe that if I keep acting in a certain way in my facade, yep. then that will negate what I really feel underneath. Yes. Yep. And uh, oftentimes we're presenting this to other people, obviously, and to ourselves. So, so, sure, it's one thing to fool another person, but fooling yourself is one of the most stupid things you can do, <laughs> actually, if you're ever going to have a relationship with God in particular, it, and ever going to have a relationship with yourself, mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most stupid things you could ever attempt to do. So you definitely won't, don't want to have a facade with yourself. But we do do it, and that's, that's one of the reasons we do it, because yes. we just don't want to know the truth about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Second, we want our partner to believe something about ourselves, which mm. is not true, which mm. you mentioned. Very, very silly too, isn't it? If you think about it, we're basically encouraging our partner to develop a relationship with us based on them thinking that we're a certain person that we're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Now, sooner or later, when they find out that we're not the person they thought us to originally be, of course, the relationship will be destroyed. Yeah. So. So. We want a facade. Yeah, not going to be very helpful to the relationship. <laughs> the third thing is that my facade demands that I actually keep believing something about my partner that isn't the truth. Yes, because it basically, it basically assumes a number of things about your partner. For example, it assumes your partner's stupid. It assumes your partner wants you to be a certain way when they may not. It makes a number of very invalid assumptions about your partner. So you're actually wanting your partner to believe a whole heap of things. And you believe, in fact, that your partner believes a whole heap of things they may not believe. So if we can e explain that a little bit further, it's like me being in my facade, mm -hmm. um, uh, in that facade and in my continual presentation of that facade, then I have to have the belief that you're going to accept that facade Correct. and that you want that facade Correct. and that you like that facade. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and all three things may be completely wrong. <laughs> I see. So and, that and also, it, it, like I feel, it, it dishonours your partner because you, you, you are quite, quite strongly saying that your partner has no idea who the real you is. And that's a, if that's what your intent is, to, to dishonour your partner so much, to, to not even show them what your real person is, like what your real intent is, what your real nature is, then you're not thinking very much of your partner. You don't love your partner very much if that's what you wish them to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but these are the reasons why we do have a facade. We don't want the truth about ourselves to Correct. ourselves. Correct. We don't want our partner to know the truth about us. Yes. And we believe, we might believe that our partner likes this version yes, of or ourselves. We certainly like our version of ourselves. Better. Otherwise we wouldn't do it. And we believe our partner should like this yes. version of ourselves yes. too. Yeah. Otherwise yes. we wouldn't present it to them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's why we do it. That's why we do it. Let's talk about why it's, it's very funny. manipulative. <laughs> yes. Very manipulative. So Yes, well let's talk about that. Let's yes. talk about the fact that the facade is a form of manipulation. Of course. 
and what that does to a relationship. Well, every time a person feels manipulated, they're not going to feel very close to the person who's manipulating them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course, it's going to cause a break in the relationship. Like every if I if I have been if you present to me what I later find out to be completely untrue, mm -hmm. Well, it's impossible for me to not also in that moment believe that you didn't attempt to manipulate me yeah. to get me to do a whole heap of things that I would not have normally done, have done if I knew the truth. Yeah, it's a way of controlling, isn't it? I'm going to control who I, am, who I present myself to be and the truth about myself mm -hmm. in order to control how you might respond to whatever yes. I'm saying. And and the unfortunate truth is that if you had presented yourself as you truthfully are, I might not have even been interested in having this relationship. Yeah. So the whole relationship would be a lie. Mm -hmm. And and then what you would expect that person person who's been there on the receiving end of that manipulation to be happy about it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so let's play devil's advocate a little bit here because you're saying if if I presented the truth about how I really feel, then you might not have liked it and you might not have wanted to be in a relationship with me. Wouldn't that be ruining my relationship? Isn't it better to keep up my facade? No, that's not ruining anybody's relationship. You haven't got a relationship at that point. Yeah. <laughs> There's no relationship to ruin. <laughs> because from a soul perspective. The only motivation for doing it is selfish. Mm -hmm. You want something from the other person and, and you know you can get it as long as you present something that's not true mm -hmm. that's manipulation and it's selfishness you're being selfish mm. pre 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 presenting a facade to somebody else while you're having a relationship with them is complete selfishness it's only self-motivated yeah so the effects of selfishness on a relationship then are <laughs> <laughs> well you could go on for uh, quite a few days about the effect of selfishness on a relationship but, but we'll probably cover that in another. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose what I'm getting at is that from a soul perspective, the damage is being done. You mentioned that this damage is, it's quite unpleasant, obviously, for the partner to find out later that, that, that a facade has been presented to them. But even during the, the act of presenting the facade, there's a lot of, there's no soul opening or connection in that, is there? So from God's perspective, there's not even really a relationship. Well, is that a facade right? is not your soul. It's your intellectual manufacture of what you believe yourself to be. It's not mm -hmm. who you really are. So what a, what a person's getting from you in the relationship is they get to feel who you really are. And then what you're presenting at them to be is completely different to what they feel you really are. So for a start, there's a lot. They have to be willing to accept a lot of lies to stay in a relationship with you. And a person who's willing to accept a lot of lies is probably also willing to give a lot as well of lies as well. Mm -hmm. and, and so so at the end of the day, you, you're basically having an imaginary relationship. Yeah. Like it's just a figment of your imagination. Yeah. It doesn't really exist. Because as soon as you presented your real self, what would happen then? Right? Now, if you presented your real self to a person who truly loved you and wanted your real self, then of course they'd be very happy with that. Yeah. But if you presented your real self to a person who only wants to see what you're lyingly presented to them, then of course they're going to leave you probably immediately, mm -hmm. I would suggest. And that's the reason, one of the reasons why you're doing it. But it's stupid because it doesn't create any emotional intimacy. There's no potential for growth and there's no potential for any closeness uh, on any level, really. Like, so, yeah, it's a very pointless exercise. And yet we see the majority of people do it. Yes. It's very, very sad. Yeah, yeah. So within that, you've just mentioned that you've, the desire for facade is a lack of desire for truth, essentially. Mm. And it is, in fact, lying. Of course it's lying. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, knowingly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not just unwittingly. Yeah. Knowingly lying. Knowing that you're not the person you're presenting yourself to be is lying. Yeah. It's quite straight, you know. And again, like I said, only motivated by selfish selfishness mm -hmm. because you want something in return. That's the only reason why you do it. And it has the flow on effect, doesn't it? That I actually, if I present a facade, I'm lying to you constantly. Mm -hmm. I diminish your capacity to make free will choices about uh, informed choices, really. About well, that's the what's other thing. I'm on. severely impacting upon the free will of another person by being in a facade. Yeah. I am any lie perpetrated towards another stops them from being informed to make proper decisions. So, so whenever I'm presenting a facade, 
I'm purposefully manipulating their will. Mm -hmm. Right now, from God's perspective, God, the own, one of the only gifts that God has given to humankind is the gift of free will. Like there are a couple of gifts God's given. One of them is free will. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about it from God's perspective, how important is free will? It's sacramount to yeah. God. It's like yeah. it's one of the most important things that you could honor in a relationship. And when you're presenting a facade, you are in complete dishonor of the of the gift of free will. Mm -hmm. You, you are basically manipulating the person's decision-making process. That's what you're doing. And you're wanting to do it, yeah. which is a very dark and evil behavior. And even if you're doing it because you already believe that facade of yourself, well, like I said, that's paramount to stupidity. Believing mm -hmm. something about yourself that deep down is not true is just crazy as well. <laughs> so, so. So I just feel a lot of people have huge amounts of self-delusion when it comes to this facade issue and how big it is in their life mm -hmm. and how dangerous and negative it is in terms of the development of their soul condition. Yeah. And of course, how dangerous it is, dangerous it is to their relationship. Mm. Sooner or later, somebody's going to find out the truth. And when they do, you, you're going to find that those people are not going to be very happy. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is not just about things, the actual events that we're lying about. It's no. about the nature of who we are, isn't it? What we really feel, what we really want. Mm. A lot of times in relationships, people are just presenting a complete facade about all those things. their opinions, their likes, their dislikes, all of these things. But and sooner or later in a relationship, pressure comes, mm -hmm. right? And when the pressure comes, that's when you start to see the person's true nature, right? And and if they are presenting a facade to other people and you notice it, then they're bound to be presenting a facade with you. Yeah. And if they're lying to other people, they're bound to be lying to you. Right? We can't, we can't expect any different. Yeah. And, and if those things are happening, uh, this is all about the character and nature of the individual. Their character, the, which is a primary uh, importance in a relationship. And it's, one, and it's one thing that we notice most people don't focus on at all. They're not concerned about character. They're only concerned about sexual attraction, attractiveness, you know, physical attractiveness of some kind, and everything being safe and secure and financially and stable. And sense of humour seems oh, to... Oh, yeah, sense of humour rates high. Yeah. And none of that has anything to do with character. None of it. And, and if you don't uh, enter a relationship wanting for there to be a development of character, then, of course, relationships are going to just disappear quite rapidly as a result. Yeah. And... From God's perspective, the development of your character is one of the most important things you can do. Yeah. And by the way, if you want to have a close relationship with a partner, it's also one of the most important things you can do. Yeah. And developing a facade is the opposite of developing character. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and we've pretty much covered the final point, which is that you can't give or receive love. If I'm in my facade, I cannot give you love and I cannot receive love from no, you. No, because love comes from the soul of the person to the other person's soul and vice versa. It's for you to receive love from a person it has to enter your soul. It can't enter through your facade or through your addictions, which is what your facades are based around protecting. Mm -hmm. and, and if you are not having this soul-to-soul -soul based loving exchange, there's no love present. It's almost like, isn't it, like my facade is a cardboard cut out of me that I keep presenting to you and I can't, there's no emotional flow of, of real soul. This is where my soul actually is and that's where the real relationship would happen. Yeah. But if, I, if I'm asking you to continually interact with this cardboard version of myself, mm -hmm. there's no love that's going to flow out of you into me or out of me into you, is there? Well, that person that you put up yeah. is a fiction of your own imagination or your own desire for me to imagine it. And either way, I'm just having a relationship with someone I imagine you are. Yeah. And that, that obviously means that it's not a real relationship yeah. and, it, and it's incapable of becoming one yeah. while it happens. Yeah. So it's very, very dangerous to yeah. your relationship, a facade. And in fact, it's very dangerous to any relationship, yeah. but very dangerous to your relationship with a partner who's going to be with you for hopefully for a large portion of your life. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting because most of the time people enter these kind of relationships at the beginning because they think it's only going to be temporary anyway. Mm. 
right? And so they present a facade thinking the whole thing's going to be temporary relationship. They get a bit of sex out of the facade and then they go on their merry way, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why a lot of these kind of relationships start. Unfortunately, though, people get trapped in the addictions of relationship after that and find themselves in the relationship for a long period of time trying to maintain a facade, which is quite difficult. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. And of course, if we allow our part, we've been speaking about ourselves in facade, but if we allow yeah. our partner to be in a facade with us, we're basically, all of these issues are then apply in the reverse, really, don't they? And, it's, and if we know it's true that they are presenting a facade and we're still accepting it, then that says a lot about our character. Yeah. It says a lot about our willingness to, to actually accept the lie. Mm -hmm. And it's highly likely that in accepting that lie, we probably also perpetrate quite a lumber of our mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. So yes, it, it, or, it, it's a demonstration of our poor character by accepting it. Yeah, because often we, we're content with that because we're getting what we want Correct. from that person denying themselves or uh, presenting different feelings to us or different desires to us. We selfishly want what we want and we, we don't even care enough about that person to challenge them and say, hey, right. you actually feel something different here. Yes, yeah. and, and how can I you know, receive from you what I would like to have when, when I'm knowing that you're just putting something on, you know. Mm. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, I, I have always found facade-based relationships are very, very difficult, mm -hmm. which is the reason perhaps why I don't have too many relationships. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, and I'm not talking about partner relationships there. I, I even mean facade relationships with people who are in a facade when they talk to you, mm -hmm. it's, it's impossible to maintain a relationship with them in the long run uh, for so many reasons. So, so if you want to stay in a facade-based relationship, you're going to find most probably that unless your partner is willing to do exactly the same as you are, that your relationship will be utterly destroyed in the long run. Mm. And as and soon as you pass into the spirit world, it's going to be destroyed anyway because you'll both see what you truly are. Yeah, yeah. And it's never going to be fulfilling if both of you are content to be in a facade. It no. will feel very hollow and... Uh, well, it's just a facade-based bartering system. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. why would you want such a relationship in the first place? It, has, it says something about your character, even if you wanted such a relationship mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like I said, though, most people want it for other reasons, like for safety, security, financial safety, security, sexual uh, feelings, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's, there's usually an ulterior motive yeah. That, yeah. that is quite prominent for a relationship to stay in facade for a long period of time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Terrible Thank for you. your relationship. Yeah. Another thing. So you can it's, see why we've talked about a lot of these emotions before, and you can see now the effect that they would have on any relationship, including your relationship with God, of course, yeah. but relationship with a partner, just as damaging to your relationship with your partner as yeah. they would be to your relationship with God. Yeah, and as you mentioned in the uh, introduction to this session, it's that relationship with a partner that often becomes our primary relationship. We don't have God in our lives necessarily. We don't necessarily have many other people who are in our life every single day for a long period of time. Mm. Uh, and so this is the area where there's the potential for so much harm to our soul condition, so much unhappiness to, to grow and grow and grow, and conversely, if we deal with these issues that we're discussing in this session, then the opportunity for, for love and happiness to grow exponentially. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, again, another a big thing to avoid. Yes. You know, bad facade. habit to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, for many people who are in facade, it's such an ingrained habit. Yep. It's automatic. Yep. They've done it for such a long time. They're so good at it or they think they are. Yeah. And if, if you're sensitive emotionally, you feel it immediately. But, but if you're not sensitive emotionally, you'll, buy it, you'll take the bait. Yeah. You, you will. And it's sad that the majority of people on earth are so insensitive emotionally that anybody on earth with a facade finds life quite easy. Yeah. It should be the opposite way around. Anybody in a facade on earth should find life very difficult. If we were all emotionally sensitive we'd instantly be able to feel when a person's in a facade and it would not attract us at all. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I feel the facade, you know, the, the way 
to combat a facade from a from an exterior perspective is to be emotionally sensitive. As soon as you're emotionally sensitive, you can feel that what a person's saying to you is completely different to what they feel towards you, yeah. and therefore not worth trusting. Mm. In order to become emotionally sensitive, though, you're going to have to do your own work on your facade, and it's certainly it's powerful work and very worthwhile to look at sincerely breaking it down because you confront a lot of investments and a lot of fears and a lot of um, really damaging emotions. And mm. and in doing it, it's very freeing as yes. well. Yes. In our upcoming assistance groups in 2016 to 18, we're going to have a little section on the facade self in, one, in the second group, but we're going to have a much larger section of, of understanding the sin Yes. And then dealing with the sin, because a facade creates a lot of sin. Yeah. And we need to understand what's going on with our facade and, and the powerful effects it has negatively on our soul condition and, and on our life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm.